Welcome to the Rusted Garden Homestead. This video is all about containers, watering the containers, your container plants, come midsummer when the heat is really there. We'll go over watering examples. It can be a little bit boring, but I'm going to show you the actual quantity that needs to go in there. I think that really does help. First thing, container size makes a huge difference. You need to picture the mature plant. In this case, it's going to be a lot of peppers. How big is that pepper plant going to be? come midsummer, so you want to match the container to it. I'll show you why that matters in a second. That's a 55 gallon whiskey barrel. There's five or six bell peppers in there. That's mint in a 22 gallon metal container. That is a pepper plant that went in the same time and has been fed the same way as a pepper plant you're going to see and we'll talk about why that is yellow. Another whiskey barrel those containers down there, somewhere between 8 and 12 gallons. There's two pepper plants right in there. That's mint, rosemary. These are nice sized containers. This is perfect. You could actually put in something like that. That's probably 10, 11 gallons, maybe 12. Two or three pepper plants. You could put in a full size tomato plant in here. However, as your container goes up and you get a weighty plant up top at full growth, it could be easy for this to fall over. The value of a container that is a little more deep is that the water stays down at the bottom better than if you are in a wider but not as deep container just like that metal one. So that one there that you see dries out really quickly and that's part of the reason why that pepper plant is yellow. We'll talk about that. And then spinning around this way, these are 10 gallon root pouches. I sell them at my seed shop. Perfect for two pepper plants. Those are banana peppers right in there. They're getting a little bit yellow. That's a jalapeno, two plants in there, loaded. So the first thing we're gonna do, come you know mid-July, if your plants are really producing, the heat is coming, plants are getting stressed, we're gonna harvest all the peppers off of here, take care of them. That's a little bit independent of watering, but that's a tip that you can do now to really help your plants that may be stressed from the heat. Just remove the fruit and use it. So the container size does make a difference. Pepper plants, tomato plants, all your fruiting vegetables are programmed by nature to produce flowers and produce fruit. So you can grow in really small containers and you can get production. Take a look at these. These are all pepper plants. This is a tomato plant. It's producing cherry tomatoes right up there. They have been in these little two and a half inch containers for probably at least four months. The peppers are all producing in these small containers. And there's nothing on there. Bell pepper, jalapeno right back there. You know, these are just plants that were late. Um, well, I wouldn't say late. They never got into containers. I just grew more than I needed. This plant, this size, this is what these were like. This is the size, the banana peppers, the jalapenos, the bell peppers that you see in my containers were about three months ago or so. They all came right out of this batch. These just never got into that soil. But you can see that they're producing. The size of the plant is going to be determined by the size of the container and a smaller container will constrain the growth and full size of your plant. You still can get peppers, obviously. You can see that they're producing right there. But more importantly, when the heat of the summer comes, the less material you have in the container, the smaller container you have, you're just going to have to water way too often. You may have to water at least two times mid-July with the heat, maybe three times. A larger container will go a long way of keeping your plants healthy. So here's a banana pepper. Two of them are in there, nice and green, producing really well. Here's the problem with this container. It's a lot more shallow. It's exposed to the sun more coming in here versus the one in here is protected by the fig tree in the container. A little more shade. It's a little more, it has more depth going to it, so more moisture stays in the bottom. This container just dries out really quickly. And I watered yesterday because the plants were struggling. And what happens is, is this heats up, the sun beats down on here from the south, and then the soil contracts and it puts a big gap right here. Well, big gap for water. So if I came in and I was just putting the water right here, spraying, the water was pouring down the side, right out the hole, and then out onto the ground. So this was kind of like the perfect storm. Shallow, metal, heat, 
drainage hole right there and all the water was just washing out. So this is not a disease. This is yellow because the root system doesn't have enough water to pull in the same nutrients that are in every container here. So the plant is struggling. Still producing fruit, but the leaves are really yellow. And it's because the water was just not penetrating this whole space, soaking the root system, allowing this plant to pull into the nutrients. The water was just washing out. So when you are watering in containers, you have to make sure that you're giving them the right amount of water to soak down the center of the container down to the bottom and kind of just moisten all the, the soil in there basically. Perfect storm, this is what happens. So I will try and take care of this plant. Spinning around this way, you can see that that pepper plant was also, oh look at that, insects are some issue, got to take care of that. This pepper plant um, was planted the same time, I want to say, as the one over here. And because it's getting better moisture, better water management, it's just much more productive than the plant right there. All right, let me take off, uh, let me pick all the peppers on these plants, and then I'll show you some watering examples. Here are all the peppers that I harvested. Container size will make a difference on how often you water, and how big your plants get. And just for reference, all the little guys down there, that's what they produced. But container size doesn't only affect the size of your plant in production, it will affect how often you water. So if your containers are smaller than the ones that you see here, you may have to increase the water frequency. Now, people always wanna know exactly how much do I water? And I can't answer that because there's so many factors that come into play. So let's just say at maturity, this size, if the temperatures in your air were in the 70s, your plants were this big, maybe you're watering this every two days, but probably every three days. That's gonna take care of the plant. When the temperatures get into the 80s and you're using containers this size and you have pepper plants that are this size, Maybe you're watering every other day. Once you get into the 90s, you're definitely going to have to be watering every day, if not twice a day. And that's just because the plants pull so much moisture out of the soil in those high 90 days, full sun, they're just going to use the water that you give them in the morning and they're going to need it again at night. And it's really, really important because a lot of people will see the yellow pepper like that, and what do you think? Oh, it needs more nitrogen, it needs more fertilizer. That plant absolutely does not need that. They, that plant has been given everything that you see the plants got over here, here comes my pup, and everything, hey Willow, and everything the plants have gotten over here. Here's Tucker too, if you wanna say hello. Say hey, Tuck. So it's not a nutrient issue, and you're gonna be spending money buying nutrients or looking up you know, what fertilizers does it need. That plant just needs more regular watering. All right, so let's get to watering. Willow's gonna want some of the water. So you wanna start with really putting the water in to the center of the container, maybe five, 10 seconds, and you want that water to soak down to the bottom of the container. And remember, I created accidentally the perfect storm, a more shallow container, the hole is right down there, and when I would water like this, the water would just pour down the sides and drain out the hole. So you don't wanna just give a quick top watering like this. You really wanna make sure you let the water soak in, you wait, and it doesn't have to be long, you know, the length of this conversation. Then you give more water right into the middle, knowing that it's seeping down. The other trick too is, notice that I put that hole about an inch from the bottom. That's so that water will kind of pool down at the bottom, and that's probably what saved this pepper. There was still water down sitting at the bottom. That's a little bit of a reserve. So rather than put that hole on the underside of the container where everything drains out, water will pull down at the bottom. And that's not going to rot the roots of your plants. So we gave that a couple quick drinks up top, and now we're just going to just water in the sides. And this is going to be need to be done when your temps are in the 90s or if they're in the upper 90s, once, maybe twice a day. And this, twice a day. 
smaller plants have smaller root systems and possibly when the plants are small you want to drink oh they're scary here you go so when the plants are smaller and they have smaller root systems maybe you could overwater but when plants are this big you can't overwater them don't worry about that and that's when people start worrying about overwatering their plants when it's when they need it the most it's usually in the middle of the summer in a container about this size you are just soaking the center and you're really kind of Im imagining the water seeping down to the bottom you might want to then stop like I was saying wait a little bit you want to make sure that if you have the holes on the side that the soil didn't contract and the water's just pouring out the sides and down the hole that's not uh, necessarily a sign that this is fully saturated if you're in doubt and as long as you have drainage holes, water the containers more. You might as well do it the right way while you're doing it because it doesn't take that much longer and your plants will love you for it. So that's plenty of water for that container. Here's Tucker, better shot of him. Do you want some water? He's usually afraid of it. There you go. Willow just dives in. So with your fabric pots, you're going to see the water kind of pour out of here pretty quickly out of the sides. Here you go. <laughs> so we're just soaking the whole top down. And if you have pets, and the dogs have only been out about 10 minutes, they are really thirsty. Your plants are going to get just as thirsty on these hot days. And you can see that I'm really soaking down the container. No worries that I'm overwatering this. In a fabric pot, it's practically impossible. Again, unless it's cooler temperatures, early in the season, maybe the plants are smaller, the root systems are smaller. You don't even see the water yet pouring out the sides of this fabric pot. They're starting to drip out, like right over there. So that's pretty well saturated, but again, sticking with the plan, we would go one more time and really soak it in. The whole, I guess, point of this video is to show you how much water has to go in there and don't be afraid to overwater. Now that we've watered everything, let's say, uh, we'll go back to the beginning and this is where I would then add the fertilizer. You don't want to put in your water-soluble fertilizer before because you're going to be putting in all this water and you don't want it to rinse out. So now that this pot is fully saturated, maybe I want to give it a nice watering of water-soluble fertilizer. I have a lot of videos on that. But you, but you just fill your watering can with usually two gallons of water and just follow the directions. And then you would just soak the top for about five seconds or so, maybe ten seconds, and then that fertilizer will sink down into here and it's not going to get washed out. This guy, yeah, it could use a little bit of fertilizer to help it along, but it's really a watering issue. So water first, soak everything, let them, you know, let it sit 10, 15 minutes and then put in your water soluble fertilizers. Thanks for watching. I hope this gives you some idea on the principles of watering your container plants when the, hi the height of summer is here. The heat is here, the plants are mature. Bottom line, I'm gonna say it one more time. You can't overwater them, give them more water than you think. Thanks for watching. Please check out my seed shop at therustedgarden.com and please subscribe. I'll show you how well these pepper plants do in about four weeks.